Hello everyone, welcome to our uh, discussion on chapter 4 or uh, this is just actually half of our chapter 4 uh, because the title of this chapter is Medical Nutrition Therapy for Gastrointestinal Tract Disorders and uh, I told you last time that uh, the, uh, the topic uh, where we will end our midterm coverage is on the upper GI tract disorders only. Okay, so we're just going to tackle half of the chapter for for your midterm. Okay, so uh, therefore, uh, I'm going to upload uh, two separate PowerPoint presentations uh, for, for, for uh, chapter 4, no? So, again, for this midterm, we'll only tackle the upper gastrointestinal tract disorders. So, uh, you remember, guys, that the upper GI tract uh, composes of the organs uh, found, um, of course, in the upper part of the GI tract. And specifically, that includes the mouth, esophagus, the stomach, and actually the duodenum. Okay, duodenum is actually a part of the upper GI tract. Um, the demarcation that separates upper from lower GI tract is called the ligament of traits. Okay, yeah, so uh, that's between uh, duodenum and jejunum. So jejunum down to anus is uh, the lower GI tract. Okay, so we'll only tackle those diseases that uh, affect the upper GI tract organs. So, uh, yeah, so we have um, esophagus, no? Uh, I don't know, anong esophagus da yun ta, but anyways, uh, wala nag-tackle ang um, periodontal diseases, okay? So, periodontal diseases are uh, diseases that affect the, the teeth as well as the uh, nearby tissues uh, that are found in the mouth, okay? So, wala na siya na-appeal so adritsotadris uh, sa esophagus. So although na ay uh, discussion on on periodontal diseases in uh, the MNT book of Dr. Hamurabo. So I'll just uh, cite uh, the pages no uh, where uh, those topic is uh, found. But in this PowerPoint presentation we'll just uh, you know uh, start uh, with esophagus right away. So, you know that it's a tube from pharynx to the stomach. It connects the pharynx with the stomach. Okay? So, um, it's actually the last um, uh, organ uh, involved in the last stage of uh, the swallowing phase. Okay? So, uh, we'll be able to discuss that uh, later on about the swallowing phases. But, yeah. Um, esophagus uh, has this upper esophageal sphincter and then the lower esophageal sphincter. So, the UES is uh, or acts like 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 a gate that that regulates the entry of foods from the pharynx. Okay, so uh, we have pharynx and then uh, before the esophagus na atay ginatawag na sphincter and that's the upper esophageal sphincter and that's the uh, topmost part of the esophagus. Okay? So, the UES uh, is closed except when swallowing. Okay? Of course, it has to open in order to accommodate uh, what you just swallowed. Okay? And, yeah, uh, located in the bottom, in the bottommost part of the esophagus is the lower esophageal sphincter. So, this closes entrance to the stomach. So, this one, um, regulates you know, the flow of uh, bolus. The food that, that comes through the esophagus is called bolus. Okay? Uh, it's not chyme yet because, you know, uh, chyme is only produced when it reaches the stomach. Okay? But since what is the stomach, so the food, the food uh, that you just swallowed, no, that, that, that uh, goes through the length of the esophagus is just called bolus yet. Okay? So, uh, the lower esophageal sphincter uh, prevents reflux of stomach content 
back into the esophagus so it it opens no uh, when the bolus has to come through the stomach okay so and also um uh, when you're not eating the lower esophageal sphincter um what's this uh closes okay so mo close ang lower esophageal sphincter para dili mo backflow ang acid from the stomach or else so yung mahita bo, uh, that, that's uh, uh, one of the clinical manifestations that a person might be suffering from uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease with which includes uh, hyperacidity no okay yeah so in order for us to not uh, feel heartburn because you know uh, heartburn uh, one of the common causes of that is gastric uh, acid reflux okay when you say reflux backflow okay so we don't want that to happen uh, frequently no although uh, it, it may happen in in healthy persons like for example uh, when uh, you just had your meal and then uh, right away you you uh, went straight to your bed and you know you uh, yeah so uh, when when you when you lie sa imohang bed so of course uh, na possibility nga bubalik ang stomach contents uh, upwards diba, to the esophagus which you know uh, produce produces the heartburn sensation okay but if it's more frequent than normal then definitely you uh, it has to be checked because uh basic na ana na siya girl okay so uh yeah these are the common symptoms of gi diseases we have esophageal strictures or tumors esophageal spasm achalasia gastric ulcer duodenal ulcer pancreatic or biliary tract disease lactose intolerance due to lactase deficiency or rapid transit time and esophageal reflux okay so if uh one experiences this then you know uh, these are the the possible uh implied uh disorder okay yeah uh so I'll, I'll just leave this for your own reading huh? okay so uh, for example uh, we have uh, if, if one experiences pain two to five hours after a meal and then the pain suddenly subsides after eating then most likely it is uh, connected with duodenal ulcer okay yeah, and you know, flatulence, cramps, this distension. You might have lactose intolerance, especially if you experience this after uh, eating or drinking uh, dairy products. Okay? Uh, if uh, you ingest a fatty meal and right away you, you feel abdominal pain, then uh, you might have to check no, your biliary tract or, or your gallbladder. Uh, because you know, uh, nga nung man, nga nung, uh, it is implied with uh, it has something to do with the gallbladder because a uh, gallbladder is the one that that contracts that releases bile when uh, chyme is very fatty or when you eat um, high amounts of fat and you know, bile is needed for fat digestion, so that's why inana okay, so. That's it. So, kung magkaon kagtaghan ka fat, so if na is something wrong sa sa gallbladder or si or sa duct that connects your gallbladder to the duodenum, then if na ay blockage diha no, so uh, that may be the one causing the pain that you expect that you experience after ingesting a fatty meal. Okay. Um, cancer of the oral cavity, pharynx, and esophagus. I will not um, discuss this like uh, very thoroughly because uh, there is a separate chapter uh, on the MNT for cancers or oncological nutrition. But uh, I'll just you know um, scan through these slides and discuss only the salient points. Um, of course, when one is experiencing cancer, uh, you know that cancer. Uh, has this hyper hyperinflammation as uh, the main feature of their pathophysiology so 
uh, you might expect that uh, these cancer patients no, are malnourished, are very prone to malnutrition because uh, with hyperinflammation comes anorexia and uh, fat and or muscle wasting. Okay, so uh, aside from anorexia, no, uh, dili pud kaayo sila makakaon, especially if the cancer is located in the oral cavity. Okay, uh, for example, uh, in this uh, a picture, no, uh, okay, na ako correction ani sorry, uh, gikuha ramang gud na ako ni siya nga PowerPoint sa uh, website no sa libro nga uh, amo ang gi subscribe diri sa HE but uh, dapat uh, when when you post uh, a picture of a patient in a PowerPoint slide the the eyes no must be you know blurred or uh, dapat na siya black nga that 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 would cover the eyes of the patient because you know uh, that would protect the privacy of the patient okay especially if soon uh, you will be required to create um a case study so definitely dapat kanang kuan um sa ni mo cover ang eyes or ma blur iya ang face uh, if you ever want to include the picture of the patient in powerpoint slide or in word file or in your document or anything okay so yeah so if uh, the tumor is located uh, in the oral cavity then uh, you would really imagine no, that uh, this patient really experiences difficulty in swallowing, okay? Or uh, they they might feel pain, no, when when eating, when swallowing. So that would further hinder uh, increase in food intake, okay? That would uh, further uh, make them uh, wasted, okay? Because of that. Okay. So, um, if the dysphagia becomes so severe, uh, it is an indication already for enteral nutrition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you also have to uh, deal with the symptoms that come with uh, the cancer itself, and then the chemotherapeutic agents uh, for to 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 treat cancer okay uh, chemotherapeutic agents are those uh, drugs no that um, that we give to the patients to the patient para at least um dili kaayo mag mag spread ang ang cancer dili siya mahibong uh, sani dili siya mag metastasize when you say metastasize mag ko ano mag 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 what's this mag spread from one tissue to another okay so yeah uh, sometimes kaning mga uh, kaning mga symptoms like alterations in taste sensations dry mouth loss of appetite muc mucositis and dysphagia uh, all of this no are all of these um, uh, are possible results of uh, therapy for cancer. Okay? So, uh, kinahanglan na ito na siya i-deal. So, natin yung mga specific nutrition interventions for each of these symptoms. So, we'll tackle that up <coughs> when we discuss uh, MNT for cancer. So, uh, don't forget to, to screen or to assess the patient for malnutrition because it is suspected uh, according to uh, what we just did no uh, on the malnutrition awareness week diba and um 80% of of cancer patients are malnourished diba so uh, if you ever deal with with a patient who has cancer that uh, you would really expect no, that uh, na siya malnutrition. So, to, don't forget to assess for malnutrition. Uh, yeah. So, uh, we have a uh, GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease. So, this is defined as symptoms or mucosal damage produced by the abnormal reflux of gastric contents into the esophagus. Okay. So, 
when there is like abnormal reflux or a backflow from the uh, stomach uh, upwards no to the esophagus then if it it is if it is consistent if it is chronic if it is long term then it might be GERD already okay so the symptoms of GERD are burning sensation after meals okay heartburn regurgitation or both especially after meals symptoms often aggravated by recumbency or bending over and relieved by antacids then um if gaka experience kag inana no heartburn tapos pain and then the only thing that would um make the pain subside is when you, when you uh what's name when you bend no when you bend your your stomach or uh yeah so and if marilive siya sa mga antacids like uh cremil s diba so uh basic gerd na, na siya um is separate condition that would uh that would make gerd worse is hiatal hernia hiatal hernia is an pouching of a portion of the stomach into the chest through the esophageal hiatus of the diaphragm so heartburn after heavy meals or with reclining after meals and hiatal hernia may coexist with GERD worsening the symptoms of GERD so uh, an illustration that would uh, uh, depict uh, each of the conditions no, is uh, here so for hiatal hernia uh, this is the pouch okay the pouch that just protrudes uh beyond the beyond the stomach no and yeah and this would uh, worsen no, the reflux of acid okay the lower esophageal sphincter is definitely affected okay the less or yeah the the shortcut for le for lower esophageal sphincter is less okay so the less uh, cannot relax okay cannot close because um, okay because you know um, of this out uh, out pouching no? of, of this portion of the stomach okay so uh, what happens or what would you expect guys if inani na lang per me. Of course, madamage imuhang esophagus because the esophagus is not uh, designed to resist to resist acidity, to resist hydrochloric acid. Okay? Uh, the only the only tissue in our body that re that is successful in resisting the damage of hydrochloric acid is the stomach. Okay? Esophagus is very vulnerable to uh, damage no, due to hyperacidity okay so um as a result uh pwede na siya mahimo ang kaninga portion sa esophagus no nga, nga affected sa hiatal hernia and reflux okay uh the possible result would be barrett's esophagus and this is a pre-malignant state guys meaning this is the precursor of cancer so uh, if this would ever become cancerous, then it would start with Barrett's esophagus. And it is caused by uh, hydrochloric acid. Okay? Esophagitis means uh, inflammation of the esophagus. And if you are suffering from reflux disease, you might also have esophagitis. Okay? Especially... Um, inflammation in the lower part of your esophagus okay uh, vitamin A deficiency can also lead to Barrett's esophagus so that's a trivia okay how do we diagnose GERD um, to be really certain no uh, doctors usually uh, perform endoscopy okay so yeah uh, if uh, you have um, Barrett's esophagus or if you have, you know, GERD, uh, because usually if you have Barrett's esophagus, then 
most likely you also have GERD. So usually, um, endoscopy is aimed to detecting whether you have Barrett's esophagus or not. If na uh, then uh, you have positive endoscopy. But if uh, wala, then you have negative endoscopy. But it does not rule out the presence of GERD because uh, some patients that uh, uh, are in the early stage of GERD might have Barrett's esophagus, uh, might not have Barrett's esophagus yet. Okay, kaya naapaman siya sa early nga stage sa GERD. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, we also have this ambulatory reflux monitoring. Okay. So, this is to um, uh, monitor no, the amount of stomach content refluxed upwards the, the esophagus. So, we have the goals of nutrition intervention in GERD. So, uh, increasing the lower esophageal sphincter competence. Okay. So, when you say less competence, that means um, the ability of the less to close. Okay. The ability of the less to close. So, if uh, delete na kayo siya mo close, no? so, mo nang magsigi na lang o uh, reflux, magsigi na lang add to ang um, stomach content padulong or, or pataas sa esophagus. Okay? So, that's why uh, our goal is to increase uh, its capacity to close. Okay? To close when there is uh, no incoming bolus, no? Okay? Uh, kanimang good na ay GERD kay kanang muragwan bad uh, dili na kayo mo close iyang less okay decreasing gastric acidity which results in decreasing severity of symptoms because of this acidity mang good and uh, that is the one main factor that causes the symptoms so if you try to lessen the gastric acidity then you would really expect that there would be there would also be a decrease in severity of symptoms Improving clearance of contents from the esophagus, identification of drug nutrient interactions because uh, the drugs that are being used to treat GERD also negatively in interact no, with nutrients. So, we have to identify those okay, and act accordingly. And prevention of obstruction if esophageal stricture is present. Improvement of nutritional intake if appropriate. So, uh, at, at the, the components of the MNT for GERD, initiate weight reduction program if overweight. Okay, overweight and obese persons are more likely to develop GERD. Okay, so that's why if they are overweight or obese, then uh, one of our primary goals must be for that patient to lose weight. Okay, uh, studies have shown that... Uh, if these overweight and ob obese patients um, uh, lose their weight, then they, uh, an increase uh, in the competence of less is observed. Okay? Uh, if the patient is a smoker, kanimang good, uh, kung ano, kanimang good uh, smoking, it lowers the less pressure. So, uh, every time you smoke, kanang na inhale nga smoke no kanang mga components diha, uh, it decreases the competence of the less. Okay. Wear loose fitting clothing, raise the head of the bed for sleeping, avoid eating within three hours of bedtime, and remain upright after eating. Reduce gastric acidity by eliminating the following. Okay. There are really foods no, that would increase acidity after you take them. So these are black and red pepper. Okay, Ca coffee like uh, or or any drink that is caffeinated, and alcohol. Okay, even the calf guys. Okay, na asay ka ng ko ano? Ah, uh, pun siya effect. Ipatas yaya pun yung acidity. Okay. Um. Then, guys, um, small and frequent feedings can really help uh, manage the symptoms of GERD. So, uh, 
large meals must be uh, broken down to six smaller meals. Okay? And there are also foods that lower the pressure of lower esophageal sphincter that decrease the, the competence of less. And those are chocolate and products made of chocolate, mint, and foods with a high fat content. Okay? So, maunang uh, sa GERD diet, wala ni sila yung mga inani. And usually, low ang fat. Okay? Uh, spicy and acidic foods uh, might also be avoided. Although, this is case-to-case -case basis, but uh, generally, no, uh, uh, GERD patients respond to these uh, foods. So, might as well, uh, i-restrict food na to na sila. Uh, limitation of this food should be based on individual tolerance. Yeah, case-to-case -case basis. So, uh, evidence reflecting the true efficacy of these maneuvers in patients is almost completely lacking, okay, for, for uh, these conditions, no? Uh, but, uh, this was uh, from 2005, no? Uh, uh, many things have improved uh, uh, in our time now. So, uh, it, it has been proven that, you know, nutrition interventions can really help uh, these patients with GERD uh, cope up, no? Okay. So, uh, these are the drugs commonly used, commonly used to treat uh, GERD and other gastrointestinal disorders. First is antibiotics. Antibiotics uh, that eradicate Helicobacter pylori, and this is the pathogen that uh, is the causative agent of ulcer. Okay, so contrary to popular belief, uh, ulcer is not mainly caused by not eating uh, meals uh, regularly, no, but it is actually um, caused by an infection, an infection caused by Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori. Okay? So, that's why ka ng mga naay ulcers na tagaan silag antibiotics. Okay? Uh, antacids are also given to neutralize gastric acid in acid reflux and peptic ulcer. Okay? So, we have um, many uh, antacids available. No? Okay? We also have proton pump inhibitors. So, from the term itself, uh, these are drugs no, that would inhibit uh, proton production and you know that protons are acidic so to to decrease gastric acid secretion to decrease H plus okay kanamang good H plus kung magcombine na siya o chloride mahimo na siya hydrochloric acid so para ma-inhibit ang proton pump so therefore ma, ma decrease ang gastric acid or ang hydrochloric acid then uh, this class of drugs uh, is administered to uh, patients with GERD. So, uh, the famous PPIs or proton pump inhibitors are omeprazole and lansoprazole. We also have H2 receptor antagonists. We have simetidine and ranitidine. So, uh, these drugs also inhibit gastric acid secretion. And we also have sucralfate. Sucralfate protects stomach lining and may increase mucosal resistance to acid or enzyme damage. So, su sucralfate uh, provides additional protection, no? Aside from the mucus that is naturally produced by the stomach cells, this suc sucralfate can, you know, uh, add additional layer add that would, uh, you know, prevent the acid from corroding the tissues, Okay. Uh, usually, mga good kani sila mga patients kaya na agard, wala na kaya sila ga produce ug mucus sa ilahang stomach lining. So, they need additional, uh, you know, uh, protection that could come from this medication. Uh, medications used to treat GERD, we have antacids, Gaviscon that uh, decreases uh, gastric acidity and HD receptor antagonists. Um, okay, proton pump inhibitors, okay. Acid suppression is the mainstay of therapy for GERD, okay. So, therefore, na ato, na ato yung mga foods nung no, atong i-avoid. Katong mga foods nga ga 
ga uh, gapa increase sa uh, gastric acid and katong mga foods nga gapa decrease sa competence less okay Um, yeah, naapapod na yung mga pro-motility agents. They promote the uh, the transit no, of foods uh, or or these drugs accelerate the transit time of foods from the stomach to the rest of the GI tract. So, if the food stays for a shorter time, if the time stays for a shorter time in Uh, in the stomach then there would be lesser chance that this uh, stomach con content uh, would would go upwards no, and cause damage to the esophagus so yeah so promotility agents are also a choice to treat GERD uh, yeah promotility pro agents such as like this um, there are cases of GERD that uh warrant no surgery okay so we have uh, this procedure called funduplication so fundus of stomach is wrapped around the lower esophagus to limit reflux okay yeah amazing yeah kani so this is used no para um uh para mo mo, mo lessen ang chance no nga mag reflux ang stability. Okay, what is our medical nutrition therapy for nausea and vomiting? So, nausea and... Okay. Uh, you know already that prolonged vomiting is called hyperemesis. Okay? Uh, th th this is what we learned from our discussion in pregnancy, di ba? Uh, of course, with prolonged vomiting comes loss of nutrients, fluids, and electrolytes. Uh, and you know dehydration electrolyte imbalances and weight loss would then ensue okay so uh thankfully we have medications you know, that that would counteract this hyper -mass. we have anti-nauseants and anti-emetics but sometimes uh na ay mga cases of hyper that cannot be that cannot be dealt with drugs that would you know um uh, uh, make you decide for parenteral nutrition if intractable na. Okay? Um, we have the goals of MNT in nausea and vomiting. We have to decrease the frequency and severity of nausea and or vomiting, maintain optimal fluid balance and nutritional status, and prevent development of anticipatory nausea, vomiting, and learned food aversions. Uh, okay. There are cases, guys, that if we just think of that food, uh, by just thinking of it no uh, you can then feel nauseated like so kauna ka just by thinking of it ang tawag ana is anticipatory nausea okay so uh naay mga techniques ana no to to learn to to counteract that uh, feelings because usually muna ang cause sa nausea and vomiting kaning mag-anticipate ta ba okay labi na mag mag huna huna tag mga foods nga kabalot nga kasuka unta kay eh. so unsa man ang ato ang kuan uh, unsa man nga mga foods okay mao man ni ang usually ipangutana sa ato no unsa nga mga foods ang uh, nindot sa magsigig suka ha okay so actually we have this uh, ginger ginger tea yeah ginger tea kanang salapat. Okay, salapat is really good in uh, easing stomach aches and vomiting. Okay? So, if magsigig so kaha ang patient uh, kung uh, matolerate niya ha? Okay? Individualized siya but most uh, people would respond to um, ginger tea. Okay? Or salabat. Okay? Yeah, mauna siya ang murag first aid treatment na to, no? When vomiting stops, introduce ice chips if older than 3 years of age. If tolerated, start with rehydration beverage or clear liquids. 1 teaspoon every 10 minutes and increase to 1 tablespoon every 20 minutes. Double amount of fluid every hour. So if diarrhea is present, use only rehydration beverages. 
ako uh, okay uh, contrary to popular belief kung mag uh, sige tag sukaha no dili na to i withdraw ang tanan nya foods pwede ta mag administer og clear liquids okay pwede ta mag administer og clear liquids okay and then uh, go with the transition diets so general liquid and then soft diet and then regular diet okay um we can also administer apple juice sports drink sports drink because uh this is rich in electrolytes and glucose and we also have warm or cold tea and lemonade okay uh, alterations in temperature uh, can also help in dealing with nausea and vomiting depende depende because uh, some patients uh uh might prefer no the warm over the cold or the cold over the warm depende okay so individualized yeah, punin. but mo niya mga choices okay when uh, uh, our patient is is experiencing a uh, hyperemesis when there has been no vomiting for at least 8 hours initiate oral intake slowly when adding one solid food at a time in very small increments so uh, if wala yung vomiting no, for at least 8 hours, pwede na ta mag-introduce o soft, mga soft foods sa soft diet. Of course, uh, while uh, experience pa siya o suka-suka, no, pwede ragyud ka ng mga kuan, mga clear liquids. Okay? Choose the following types of foods kung gusto na ta mag-resume solid food. So, uh, without odor, dapat dili strongly ordered, no, para dili ma- ma nauseated ang patient low in fat okay para dali ra siya mo travel dili kaayo siya mo mo stuck sa stomach and low in fiber and take prescribed antiemetics and other medications on a regular schedule to assist in prevention of nausea and vomiting take all other medications after eating okay Um, food and feeding issues in nausea and vomiting keep patient away from strong food odors provide assistance in food preparation so as to, ab as to avoid cooking order odors eat foods at room temperature keep patient's mouth clean and perform oral hygiene tasks after each episode of vomiting yeah offer fluids between meals okay uh, do not uh, you know uh, make the patient uh, take uh, the meal and then the fluid at the same time. The fluids must be taken between meals. Okay? Para dilira kayo mabusog ang patient. Uh, nindot po, no? If uh, recovering na ang patient, ipa small and frequent feedings lang sa siya. Because small and frequent feedings are better tolerated than three large meals. Okay? Um... Kanang morning sickness, kanang uh, uh, kasukaunta no, right after we wake up, uh, i-dry cereal or i-cracker, i i-low-fat cracker like sky flakes would help. Okay? Maka-help na siya, no? We also have this life lifestyle issues no, that uh, we can... Uh, include in our nutrition education okay Kani. so uh, I will just uh, leave this for your own reading okay so those are uh, for the esophagus and part of the stomach okay but yeah napatay mga other diseases that are uh, that affect stomach first is indigestion okay so, uh, acute gastritis from uh, H. pylori, tobacco, chronic use of drugs such as alcohol, aspirin, and SAIDs. Okay. Yeah, what are the symptoms of dyspepsia or indigestion? Abdominal pain, bloating, nausea, regurgitation, and belching. Okay. So, how do we treat dyspepsia? Avoid offending foods, eat slowly, chew thoroughly, and do not overindulge. Although, kaning dyspepsia, daily in siya chronic, no? Because, uh, maka-experience sa taani, especially if kanang paspas bitaw ta magkaon, and then daghan kaya tagi kaon. Uh, 
pag kagabi na especially kung gabi ita na nag-take mahitabog yun yung disruption no kanang Christmas or New Year huy just ko ah uh, kay paspas kay magkaon ah uh, tapos very fatty pag yun yung pang kaon so um if you are experiencing dyspepsia never take a uh, high fat foods because uh, it would increase no the the time that uh, the food stays in the stomach so yeah mas mag bloat pag yun ang imong feeling ana kay uh, ang fat kin ara and high fiber foods also oo i limit lang nato na if we are having dyspepsia okay chew thoroughly <laughs> mao lagi ni mahitabo kung paspas kay ta magkaon di ba But there are cases, guys, nga chronic indigestion becomes chronic, and usually na ano na siya implicated nga offending foods. For those who are having protein intolerance, so dili ah especially meat, no protein nga gikan sa meat. Of course, ang ato ang i i restrict is ang meat. Okay, sometimes kulang pun na siya sa mga enzymes, so. Uh, enzyme replacement therapy is administered to those patients. Enzyme replacement therapy refers to like supplements. Supplements siya nga na ay enzymes sa sulod. So, uh, they are taken with foods so to improve digestion. Okay? So, that's another intervention na to manage dyspepsia. Okay? Ah, uh, chronic dyspepsia. Okay, what about gastritis? Gastritis is inflammation of the stomach and it is caused by many factors okay so yeah mauni ang uh, endoscopic images no uh, for gastritis erosion of mucosal layer exposure of cells to gastric secretions bacteria and inflammation and tissue damage okay Ah, uh, gastritis is usually caused by an infection caused by Helicobacter pylori. These bacteria are very resistant to acid, so that's why they love to grow inside your stomach. Okay. Um, normally this H pylori can really thrive in our stomach, even uh, in healthy individuals. But in uh, in patients with immunocompromised immune system. Uh, this H. pylori can successfully invade the tissues in the stomach and cause, you know, uh, damage. Okay. Uh, H. pylori is uh, can H. pylori uh, induced gastritis causes 92% of duodenal ulcers and 70% of gastric ulcers. So gastritis is usually caused by infection. We also have this uh, condition called atrophic gastritis. So this is loss of the parietal cells in the stomach. Parietal cells are the cells involved in um, the production of hydrochloric acid. So if these parietal cells are uh, few you know, in the stomach, such as in this uh, condition, Uh, there would be uh, insufficient uh, hydrochloric production, hydrochloric acid production, and that will lead to hypochloridria or decrease in HCl production. If um, very taas ng pH, like dilit na kayo acidic ang pH sa, sa stomach, then pwede na na matawag na achloridria or Uh, virtually, wala na yun hydrochloric acid nga ma-produce. Okay? And this is bad news, especially uh, in uh, our nutritional status because uh, you know that hydrochloric acid is very important in digestion. And it is also very important in the absorption of many nutrients including iron and vitamin B12. So, um, and uh, ako, uh, the loss of hydrochloric acid uh, would also be paired up no, with loss of intrinsic factor production because parietal cells are not only involved in hydrochloric acid production but also in the production of intrinsic factor which 
uh, we know that this protein is needed for the absorption of vitamin B12. So, if mawala ni mga parietal cells, mugamay po ang intrinsic factor production and that would lead to malabsorption of B12. So, therefore, per pernicious anemia would then occur. Okay, this is the procedure of endoscopy. No? Okay, it can be uh, uh, from the upper, which is called the upper endoscopy, or uh, from the lower part of the GI tract. Okay. If something wrong is suspected uh, in the upper GI tract, of course, upper endoscopy is performed. If uh, uh, there is a lower GI tract, then there is a lower endoscopy. We also have peptic ulcer disease, and this is uh, the most common uh, upper GI tract disorder uh, in many people, no? Okay? Mauni ang common yun, di ba? Ulcer. So, peptic ulcer disease, uh, usually, sa kuwan na siya, no? Uh, gastric sa stomach, but na-IPUD nga sa duodenum. Okay? Uh, peptic ulcer disease can be asymptomatic or secondary similar to uh, gastritis or dyspepsia. Uh, PUD when not treated or when complicated, uh, it would lead to hemorrhaging, perforation, penetration into adjacent organ or space. Uh, one clinical manifestation that we can see uh, uh, from a patient with PUD is melena. Melena is black tarry stools from GI bleed. Nganong mo black man ang stools, guys? Uh, mo black na siya tungod sa bleeding okay because you know uh our the blood uh contains iron and if ma oxidize na siya if magdugay na siya di sa GI tract it will turn black okay so that's an indication that there is bleeding already because nag complicate na ang ulcers so unsa man ang ulcers guys kanang ulcers mo nang mga bangag-bangag okay mga bangag-bangag sa uh sa sa ni sa stomach or sa duodenum okay nganong bangagan man siya tungod na siya sa bacteria no bacteria nga ni infect diha mao nang magbangag-bangag siya diha cause siya ulcer okay um ngano man ngano mag proliferate man ang mga h pylori diha kay mo gamay man good ang ah uh, gastric acid production okay so if mo gamay ang gastric acid production ana mo taas ang pH so masamot nga ma-promote ang uh, growth sa bacteria diha kay di naman good kaayo acidic okay so gastric ulcer formation involves inflammatory involvement of acid producing cells but usually occurs with low acid secretion duodenal ulcers are associated with high acid and low bicarbonate secretion so uh, if ang ulcer na hitabo sa stomach, then it is associated with hypochloridria or achloridria. But if the ulcers happen in the duodenum, then bali, uh, ang cause ana is uh, high acid but low bicarbonate secretion. Okay? So, more on uh, duodenal ulcers no kung acidic kaayo. Okay? Uh, increased mortality and hemorrhage are associated with gastric ulcers. Okay? So, erosion through mucosa into the submucosa. Aside from H. pylori, uh, there is um, a, less, a much less uh, common cause of PUD, which is the, the chronic intake of aspirin and NSAIDs. Maunang akong ingon nga ang NSAIDs no, are uh, uh, avoided in, in, in some cases because NSAIDs can cause bleeding because NSAIDs tend to erode the mucosa of the GI tract. Okay? Uh, erosions 
uh, would also result from severe burns, trauma, surgery, shock, renal failure, and radiation. So, how is uh, PUD medically managed? Um, we have uh, to stop no, aspirin or NSAIDs if the patient is taking this frequently. And uh, antibiotics and antacids are prescribed. And sucralfate so so is also prescribed para, especially dito sa duodenal ulcer, para ma-protectahan ba, para dili pagyod mag-erode further ang mga bangag-bangag ka na dito. Okay? Uh, medical management of PUD uh, is more important to the nutritional management. Okay? Pero it doesn't mean nga dili ta mag uh, tanawa sa, sa atong diet. I-prevent ya po nato or i-reduce ya po nato tong mga intake sa foods that uh, promote gastric acid secretion. Avoiding of tobacco can also help. Okay? Yeah, so the MNT for PUD and gastritis is of course to avoid foods that increase gastric acid secretion such as the following. Okay? Identify foods that directly irritate the gastric mucosa or are not generally tolerated. So case to case basis gapon. Okay? Basig na ay mga foods si patient nga at uh, wala diri sa listahan tapos di pud niya ma-tolerate. So para ma-determine na uh, magamit tag food and sim uh, food and symptom diary. Okay. So uh, we will use that uh dietary tool no. Uh, uh, later sa to ang um, what's this? Uh, sa allergies, MNT for allergies. Uh, small and frequent feedings uh, has been shown to decrease acid output in the um, in the stomach. So, katong mga na ay ulcer na dapat mag small and frequent feedings na sila. Okay? And uh, if the patient is underweight, then kinahanglan nga mubalik siya sa iyang sakto nga timbang because that would help uh, uh, kung ano, kill the H. pylori. Okay? Because, you know, um, we need the immune system in order to uh, kill these pathogens, diba? So, uh, uh, in increasing the immunocompetence of our immune system, kinahanglan nga okay atong protein as well as energy intake. Okay? Uh, also, assess the patient whether uh, they are malnourished or not. Okay? Because sometimes, mang good, if na sila PU, di din na sila makakaon due to pain. Okay? So, uh, screen for malnutrition and treat accordingly. Okay, what about gastric surgery? So, gastric surgery is indicated when ulcer uh, is complicated by hemorrhage, perforation, obstruction, intractability, and when patient is unable to follow medical regimen. So, ulcers may rec recur after medical or surgical treatment. Okay. Um, we have uh, different kinds of uh, surgical procedures done in the stomach. We have resective surgical procedures. Resective means kwaan na to certain part, certain portion ang stomach. We also have uh, surgeries involving anastomosis. Anastomosis is when you connect two tubular structures. Okay, So uh, I believe we have uh, pictures here that would uh, depict no, each of these uh, types of gastric surgery. We also have um, uh, surgical removal of part or all of the stomach. We have hemigastrectomy, partial gastrectomy, and subtotal gastrectomy. Hemigastrectomy is half of the stomach is removed. Okay, Partial gastrectomy is just, you know, below half of the uh, stomach. And when you say subtotal, okay, pwede mo abot no 90% of the stomach. Uh, is removed. Okay. Uh, what is the common uh, indication for gastric surgery uh, if the patient is morbidly obese? Okay. 
how do you define morbidly obese? Katong obesity type 3, di ba? Katong ang ilahang BMI is niabot nag 30. No, niabot nag 40. Okay? Di ba? Ang type 1 is 32. 34.99 ang obese type 2 is 35 to 39.99 so ang type 3 is 40 40 pataas so kanimang gug mga morbidly obese na maglisod yun taani nga dietary interventions lang or nutrition intervention lang many cases uh, they need uh, medical intervention through surgery so by uh, doing or by removing a certain part of the stomach, um, uh, it would kanang kung ano decrease the food intake of the of that patient. Okay, nigamay gud yung stomach. Okay, so therefore, uh, gamay mo gamay pud ayang food nga ma accommodate at a certain period of time. So that would aid no in a uh, decreasing food intake and you know weight loss. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, we have this ko ano. Okay. Kaning Bill Roth 1 and Bill Roth 2 are, I believe, anastomosis. Okay, anastomosis ni. Ang anastomosis mang good kay i-connect ni mo, no? Ang mga structures. Okay? Nga, ah, uh, dili ni mo makitaan sa normal nga conditions. Such as, for example, in Bill Roth 2. So, um, the distal part of the duodenum is directly connected with the stomach. Kaning upper parts of the duodenum kay detached sa stomach. So, this is anastomosis. Okay? Duodenum, uh, Billroth 1 is um, gi-remove ang lower part sa stomach and then gi-connect siya directly with uh, duodenum. So, this is uh, gastrectomy plus anastomosis. Okay? Kani, gi-remove kani siya nga part, tapos gi-connect da yun. So, nigamay ang volume sa stomach. Um, if, this, if the malignancy occurs in the stomach, when you say malignancy ha, cancer, uh, if na ay tumor di ha, ah, uh, indicated for na siya, put na siya for gastrectomy. Okay? So, um, okay. So, um, mao ni ang mga uh, specific descriptions, no, of uh, each type of surgeries. Billroth 1 is gastroduodenostomy. Okay. Billroth 2 is like this. Okay. Um, Okay. Uh, if we remove a certain part of the stomach, therefore, uh, a considerable amount of parietal cells are also removed. So, you would really expect that uh, after that, uh, there would be decreased gastric acid production and also uh, decreased vitamin B12 production. Okay? So, be careful with or be uh, attentive no, with the B12 status of the patient because uh, lagi, mas prone na siya to B12 deficiency. Okay? Uh, also, iron. Okay? Uh, kinahanglan mang good ang acidity sa stomach para maabsorb ang iron. Okay? Um, there are cases, no, that uh, indicate for total gastrectomy. So, removal of entire stomach. This is rarely done because <laughs> negative kayo ang impact ani on digestion and nutritional status. Uh, sa extreme cases lang niya sa cancer, no? sa gastric cancer. Okay? Could you imagine, anastomosis from esophagus to the edo <laughs> Gikuha ang tanan nga stomach, tapos ang, ang, ang esophagus, gi, gikonect directly to the udinum. <laughs> Di ba? So, sa una lang yun. Uh, sige, on sa man inyo hang uh, suspected nga, nga foods after nga kauno niya if nag-total gastrectomy siya. Of course, katunang mga foods no nga pre-hydrolyzed. Okay? Mag-ONS good ni siya o ka na mga pre-hydrolyzed. Okay? Mga pre-digested na. 
Kaya nga no, gikuhaan ko yung stomach. Okay? We also have this condition called Zullinger Ellison Syndrome. So, uh, this is gastrinoma. So, this is excessive production of gastrin. Okay? Gastrin is the one hormone that stimulates the production of hydrochloric acid. So, um, uh, why is it called gastrinoma? Noma means uh, malignancy. No? So, tungod sa tumor nga na to sa uh, pancreas, no? Uh, okay. Nedaghan na ino ng production sa gastrin. And, of course, excessive po ang hydrochloric acid production na kay excess man ang gastrin. Okay? So, uh, removal of the tumor and removal of a certain parts of the stomach might be indicated. We also have um, other uh, forms, other forms of um, kung ano, uh, of surgery. We have vagotomy, pyloroplasty, and RUNY procedure. Okay. So let's uh, first discuss pyloroplasty. So pyloroplasty is surgical enlargement of pylorus or gastric outlet. Okay. So this is to improve gastric emptying with obstructions or when vagotomy interferes with gastric emptying. This may contribute to dumping syndrome though. And ulcer recurrence is common. Okay. So uh, this part of the stomach, the bottom part is called the pylorus, no? Kaya naman diha ang pyloric sphincter that separates duodenum from the stomach. So, enlarge na siya, no? To uh, better facilitate gastric emptying. We also have RUNY, RUNY procedure. So, gastric par partitioning, uh, distal ilium and proximal jejunum. This is uh, the one surgery indicated for bariatric purposes. When you say bariatric purposes, weight loss purposes. So, mao ni siya usually ang gina-indicate sa um, mga morbidly obese. Okay? Weight loss is expected to be uh, to attain uh, within 12 to 18 weeks with 50 to 60% excess weight loss can be lost. Okay? So, therefore, this uh, surgical intervention is really helpful uh, in weight loss. Okay, so this is how the RUNY, or this is the outcome of the RUNY procedure. Okay. So our nutritional goals for uh, post RUNY is to prevent deficiencies, promote eating lifestyle changes to maintain losses, mechanical soft diet, three months, then solid foods, then small amounts only, so small and frequent feedings, over. Uh, okay, we have to prevent overeating it so that nausea and vomiting and reflux would not happen. Vagotomy includes severing all or part of the vagus nerves to the stomach with partial gastrectomy or pyroplasty. So, this is significant decrease in acid secretion. Vagus nerves mang good help in the production of uh, gastric acid. So, if the connection of vagus nerve to that to the stomach is severed, then, yeah, mugamay ang acid secretion. Okay? Diet post-gastric surgery. Ice chips uh, allowed 24 to 48 hours after surgery. Okay? Do not, do not, do not lengthen the amount of time nga nag-NPO ang pasyente. Okay? Even gani, uh, as early as 2 hours, makatolerate na na siya og liquids. Diba? Mauman na ang eras. Diba? So, yeah. Clear liquids such as broth, polyon, and sweetened gelatin, diluted, and sweetened fruit juice. Initiate post-gastrectomy diet and gradually progress to general diet as tolerated. So, mag-transition diets ta ani. Okay? Uh, monitor these nutrients because these are the ones that are mostly affected by uh, alterations in acid production due to uh, gastric surgery. Okay. Of course, we have this dumping syndrome. Okay. I believe I have uh, par 
uh, partially discussed this already, no? Okay, what is this one? Uh, this is a complex physiologic response to the rapid emptying of hypertonic con contents into the duodenum and jejunum. So, dumping syndrome occurs as a result of total or subtotal gastrectomy and is associated with mild to severe symptoms including abdominal distension, systemic systems like bloating, flatulence, pain and diarrhea, and reactive hypoglycemia. Okay. Basically, your dumping syndrome is just very rapid transit of foods, very rapid gastric emptying time. Like, after ni mukaon, diritsu da yun siya, wala siya na store sa sa stomach, no, or magstay siya dito for a very short period of time and then mo travel na said siya down to the land of the GI tract. So, do you think natarong ang digestion, ang absorption process? Wala. Okay, paspas ka yung pag move sa food through the GI tract. Okay? So, dumping syndrome usually occurs after surgery. Okay? Yeah. Especially ka ng gastrectomy, no? So, um, it is said here that uh, response po siya no, sa hypertonic nga foods. So, we can think of uh, foods no, that, that can make the chyme very hypertonic. Okay? So, we are looking at those um, food compounds that are hygroscopic or that are uh, very osmotic. No? Okay? Yeah, rapid movement of hypertonic chyme into the jejunum. So, fluid drawn into the bowel by osmosis to dilute concentrated mass of food. Okay. Volume of circulating blood decreases due to uh, rapid transit of foods nga. Bisag ang water kay wala kayo na absorb. So, that this can lead to dehydration. So, symptoms of dumping syndrome, cramping, abdominal pain, hypermotility, diarrhea, dizziness, weakness, tachycardia within 10 to 20 minutes after eating. So, how do we prevent the onset of early and late dumping syndromes? Um, I-avoid yun na to initially. The earliest nga nag-manifest ang dumping syndrome, i-avoid na to ng mga sugars. Because these sugars are very hypertonic. Okay? Um, do not also administer clear liquids because clear liquids are tend to be hypertonic. Okay? So, uh, when you say hypertonic, very concentrated, ha? Okay? So, bawal ta na mga sweets. So, unsay mga first meals sa dumping syndrome should consist of a protein, fat, and complex carbohydrate but with only one to two food items at that time. So, uh, Pwede gani moderate in fat, no? Because fat helps in delaying gastric emptying time. Okay? Starchy foods? Okay. Pectin? Yes. Soluble fiber is helpful in treating dumping syndrome. Okay? Uh, small and frequent feedings. Consume liquids 30 minutes to 1 hour after consuming solid food. Lie down after eating. And consider addition of functional fibers like pectin to delay gastric emptying and assist with treatment of diarrhea. Um, ang fat no, nga pwede na to gamiton is MCT. Okay? Or medium chain triglycerides. So, um, bawal ang mga simple sugars and bawal ang mga sugar alcohols. Ha? Silitol, manitol, and sorbitol nagikan sa mga gums. Uh, take note also of the drugs that contain a uh, sorbitol coating okay so ask the doctor if kana siya nga medication kay na sorbitol okay um we also have malabsorption uh, stetoria na malabsorption so stetoria is a uh, presence of fat in the in the diarrhea okay so uh, this is also a post surgical complication no affecting your uh, vitamin A, vitamins A, D, E, and K status. Okay? Uh, drugs commonly used to treat gastrointestinal disorders. So, na-discuss sa mga ganina. 
Okay, we also have this uh, the, the opposite of damping syndrome which is gastroparesis. So gastroparesis is very delayed uh, gastric emptying. Like uh, for, for the longest time, naara ang food dito na stuck sa stomach. Dili mulihok kayo ang stomach. So therefore, dili kayo mulihok ang food dito. Why? Why does that happen? Usually, it is caused by diabetes. So, uh, if gastroparesis is present in a diabetic patient, then that's called gastroparesis diabet diabetic or room. Okay. So, delayed stomach emptying of solids. Okay. And, um, uh, what's up, ah? I'm just checking no kung ga kuhan ko kung ka record ko. Um, we have um, yeah these uh, symptoms. So unsa man atong buhaton kung naiga suppress. Of course, ilimit na to ang fat no because fat you know delays gastric emptying. Okay? Except MCT no kung mag-incorporate tag fat manggaling, it is in the form of MCT dapat. Pero lower dia pun siya, reduce dia pun siya. And small and frequent feedings would also help gastroparesis. So, di ba? This is a strategy that 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 improves that that helps us uh, treat uh, many GI disorders. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, the main gastrointestinal disorders that have uh, major implications in the nutritional status of the patient. Okay? So, uh, if you have questions, if you have clarifications, then uh, we will definitely uh, answer those no, when we have our synchronous uh, class sa atong GMIT. Okay? So, thank you everyone for listening and I hope you learned something from that. Thank you.